Greetings there fellow viewers, this is TechBizmo and welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a RAM slash SSD upgrade tutorial on the Dell XPS 15 9500. This will also apply to the XPS 15 9510 as well as the 9520. It'll also apply to some of the precision mach machines that'll be the 5550, the 5560, and 5570. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. You can see the screen turned off on my XPS 15, um, but we don't really need that on at the moment anyway. In this video, I'm going to be using the iFixit Pro Tech Toolkit to perform the upgrades. Um, I'm not actually going to be doing any upgrades in this video. However, I'm just going to be showing you guys how you can upgrade them yourselves at home. A microfiber towel. Usually I would actually recommend you use something like a rubber mat, but I don't have mine at the moment. So I'm going to be laying down this microfiber towel so that we don't scratch the surface of the machine. Um, <clears throat> now, something that's very important is you want to ground yourself so that uh, you don't you, know, you don't want any un unwanted static discharges going through your boards. Um, so we're going to just flip that around. Put it around my ankle. Probably should have taken my shoes off, but you can see now we're grounded. Basically, if you don't know ground strap, you have one end connected either to the ground prong in a standard uh, receptacle, or you have it connected to the metal body of something. So like, I have it connected to the metal body of my desk. So it'll properly ground my body in case there's static electricity running through my body. Anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the uh, the tutorial. First thing that you want to do obviously is you want to go ahead and make sure your machine is powered off. So go ahead and shut her down completely. I'm currently running Windows 10 Professional on my machine, uh, but I plan to actually get a, a second SSD because this computer could take a second one and install uh, a Linux distribution uh, alongside that through dual booting. So then what you want to do, go ahead Grab your microfiber towel, lay it out, flip the laptop over, obviously, and then we can start taking the screws off the case. Alrighty guys, I actually had to make some adjustments with my desk because I'm not in my traditional filming area. Um, anyway, so what you're going to want to do is open your screwdriver kit of your choice, grab your Torx 5-bit. That is the screws on the outer casing. There are eight of them, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, eight Torx 5 screws. And you can go ahead and start removing them. And I usually have a <clears throat> the uh, outer cover for my iFixit kit to keep the screws organized. Unfortunately, I can't find that at the moment. Once you've removed all eight of those Torx 5 screws, what you're going to want to do is grab a plastic pry tool of some sort. You may or may not need the suction cup. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to need it in this uh, video. And you're going to want to start prying from the back case here, I believe. Okay, correction, I'm going to be starting from the front. Let's see if we can get the plastic pry tool in the front here. And here we are. So just carefully start prying up the shell. Just carefully go around. Be careful of the uh, little charging LED indicator on the front of the casing. You may or may not have to pry all the way around the casing. In my case, it actually looks like it pops straight up. So once you get to this point, you just lift it up from the back. Actually, my apologies, from the front end to the back. <clears throat> and you can set that aside. And here we are in the computer uh, without the case. <laughs> this is our laptop without the bottom cover, our XPS 15. Anyways, the first thing that you're going to want to do when you are in here is locate the battery connector, which is right here. In my case, I'm going to grab a little plastic spudger and loosen. This actually looks to be 
in rough shape that little batter connector there. So let's see if we can get that out without it being too difficult. And there we go. So there's the battery connector disconnected. Now, just as an additional measure that we make sure all power is drained from the board, you want to press and hold the power button just to make sure all those capacitors on the board are discharged. And here we have the two SODOM slots as well as our NVMe slot or M.2 NVMe slot. Now at this point, you, I, you know, you're ready to uh, replace the RAM. So what you want to do is slide apart these two brackets here and then just uh, pull the RAM stick out. There we have one. And same goes for the second SODIMM slot. You just pull apart the two brackets. And mind you, this is a function of the slot that it will come out at a bit of an angle like a 45, so then you want to just back it out just like the last one, and there we have it. Do your best to only touch the um, the RAM dims only by the sides. Try not to touch the copper connections. And here we have the two NVMe slots like I was talking about a moment ago. You're going to want a, I believe that is a P2 Phillips head. Yeah, you can either do a P2, or you might even be able to get away with a J1. Go ahead and loosen the screw for the solid-state drive. Again, just like the design of the RAM slot, it will lift itself up. Back it out, and here we have my solid-state drive. Now, as to the installation, let's say we will grab our brand new RAM stick. This one is a 16 gigabyte DDR4 stick, that is the type that the uh, XPS 15s and I believe, I believe the Precisions as well take DDR4. Um, that is uh, 2666 megahertz in each DIM. For mine anyway, yours might be a slightly different clock speed. Push it down into the slot. Same goes for this one. Angle it at about a 45, and then push it straight down. And there we have installed new RAM. Just like the RAM, insert the solid state drive at a 45, push it into the slot, and then grab your screw there. Fold it down flat, and then screw in your solid state drive. Be sure not to over tighten it. I have over tightened them before and it actually has snapped off the uh, that little screw stand off there. Although make sure it's not too loose also. And there we have it. There is the, the upgraded RAM and solid state drive in my XPS 15. Now, once you have done that, you are ready to reinsert your battery connector. You can either use your fingernails or your wonderful little spudger tool. And there we have it. Our battery is reinserted into the laptop. Go ahead and grab the bottom cover just as we took it out, put it in at a bit of an angle like this. I guess everything in this video is a bit of an angle, but uh, that's just how they like to have you install things, I guess. And make sure we're not pinching anything, which we are not and kind of apply pressure around the entire body of the machine just to ensure that the casing is on completely. Go ahead and switch out your bit back to a Torx 5. And once you install these screws, you should be ready to go. You might have to go through some BIOS reconfiguration. That is because removing the battery um, the battery in this machine, as well as those other XPSs and Precisions, they act as the CMOS battery. So if you disconnect the battery, all your BIOS settings will be erased. And there we have it. All right, so I've attempted to put the camera back to where we started. It might not be perfect, but uh, hopefully it'll be suitable for the rest of this video. So after you have put the screws back in, put the case back on, etc., 
um, you should be able to open your laptop and mine by default turns on. It's gonna turn on and then shut off and go through some sort of BIOS reconfiguration. Let's see if we can get it to just boot straight up without any sort of modifications on my part. The computer should be able to do it all by itself. Okay, so here we have, it says, time of day not set, please run setup program. So we'll go ahead and select continue. So that should, should just allow us to go back from, go back to normal. We may have to set a date and a time. Nope, so it's actually just gonna boot straight into Windows and it should go ahead and grab the date and time configuration straight from the Windows operating system. So go ahead and skip the disk check. It might also, you know, want to go through some series of, it might also want to go through some series of, you know, checks and things uh, before it completely fires up. So, but here we have it. We have our system back up and running. We should be able to <clears throat> view the technical specifications on the XPS 15, and we have 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is what I had before. And this isn't, I have the touchscreen disabled right now. <laughs> but yeah, here we have the technical specifications of the computer. We have our i5, or sorry, I apologize, i9 108085H CPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and our 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD. <clears throat> Alrighty, folks, that'll conclude the video for today. Um, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and useful. I apologize that my eyes have been all over the place throughout this, <laughs> this video. It has been quite a while since I filmed the video. But uh, <clears throat> welcome back, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.